I'll show you how to take advantage of Affinity Photo's non-destructive RAW functionality. First of all, I'll open a RAW file. You can use File Open, but I'll choose to move out to my file browser, then click drag a RAW file in. Opening a RAW file moves to the Develop Persona, which is a workspace layout dedicated to straightforward RAW development. On the context toolbar up here, we will see an output option. It defaults to pixel layer. This means that when I click develop, the changes made to the raw file are committed and cannot be revised at a later date. The raw file effectively becomes a pixel layer, which is flattened bitmap data. On the dropdown, there are two additional options, raw layer embedded and raw layer linked. Raw layer embedded will embed the raw file data into the saved Affinity document file. This will increase the document file size, but will ensure that the original raw data is always accessible. Raw layer linked will maintain an external link to the original raw file, in this case, the ORF file. And whenever we choose to redevelop the raw data, this file will be referred to. If the original raw file is moved, it will have to be relinked before the image can be redeveloped. With this in mind, I'll set the output to raw layer embedded for now and I'll make some basic changes to this raw image. I'll bring the brightness up, then increase clarity, and click develop. We now move to the main photo persona, which is where all the main non-destructive layer-based editing takes place. At this point, I might actually perform some additional editing using layers. I'll add an HSL adjustment using Command U on Mac, Control U on Windows. Then I'll bring the red saturation up and bring the cyan and blue saturation down. This helps accentuate the old abbey building and de-emphasizes the background sky. I might then decide that I want to revise the initial raw development settings. I can select the raw layer whose name will match the initial raw image file name. Then I can either Double click on the thumbnail, or if I have the Move tool selected using V on the keyboard, I can click Develop Image on the context toolbar. This re enters the Develop Persona, and the options will match the positions they were set to previously. I might decide to reduce the clarity slightly, and I might actually go in and change the white balance temperature and tint. I'll just make this image slightly warmer and reduce the tint slightly. Additionally, I may also increase the highlights to intensify the areas of the sky here. And to add more contrast, I'll switch to the Tones panel, enable curves, and create a basic spline graph that pushes the highlight tones up, whilst darkening the shadow tones slightly. Now, remember that I added an HSL adjustment in the main document layer stack, which reduced the saturation of the sky tones and increased the saturation of the building. That HSL adjustment is currently rendering onto the raw development result. On the context toolbar, if I uncheck Show All Layers, this will only show the raw image layer and hide all other layer work that may be above it in the layer stack. This is useful for evaluating changes being made on just the initial image. I'll enable the option again and click Develop. This redevelops the raw image using the original raw data, so there is no quality loss by repeatedly developing this layer if you need to perform multiple revisions. We can take this a step further if we were to use a workflow that involves masking. I'll drag this raw file in and offer it to the top toolbar, which will open it as a separate document. Once again, we will start in the develop persona. And for now, I'll just check I have the output set to raw layer embedded and click develop. Now I'll select the selection brush tool from the tools panel on the left, increase the brush width, and then drag across the image to select the foreground, including the tree. From the context toolbar, I'll click Refine, and this will enter Selection Refinement. I'll increase my brush width again, then click drag across 
all the difficult foliage detail and release the mouse button to refine it. On the output drop down, I'll select Mask and click Apply. This masks out the background, allowing me to insert a replacement sky. To do this, I'll go out to my file browser, then click drag this sky image in and release the mouse button to place it. I'll click drag it underneath the raw image layer on the layers panel so it renders correctly, then select the move tool with V on the keyboard and position it. I can turn snapping on up here to ensure it snaps to the bounds of the document. At this point, to match the foreground tonally with the new sky, I might decide I want to revise my raw development settings. I'll select the raw image, and although I could click develop image, this time I'll double click the thumbnail, and we're now back in the develop persona. Now, if I make a change, such as increasing the brightness, the mask rendering is retained, and the replacement sky is still being displayed, but not affected. I might also increase the saturation to help the foreground blend with the new sky. If I uncheck Show All Layers, the mask on the raw image layer will still render, but the sky layer beneath will no longer be displayed. I'll enable this option again and click Develop. So, even with additional non destructive layers, such as masks being directly applied to the raw image layer, we can still go in and redevelop the image at any time. I'll show you another example where you may want to redevelop multiple raw images simultaneously, which is very useful for compositing workflows. Now here, I've got several long exposures of a starry night with the camera pointed directly at the Polaris star. The idea is that you can blend multiple long exposures together to achieve a circular motion effect. I'll drag the first raw image in. I'm not going to touch any of the development settings yet, but I will change the output to raw layer linked. When you intend to place multiple raw files, maintaining an external link rather than embedding will help to reduce the saved document file size. I'll click develop. And in addition to changing this setting, I will also want to go to file, placement policy, and change this to linked so that subsequent placed raw files are referenced externally as well. Now I can go out to the file browser and shift click to make a selection of the remaining raw images, then drag drop them onto the document to place them. I will need to align them, so I'll select the move tool, double check that I still have snapping enabled, and click drag them into place. Now, I'll shift click and make a selection of all the raw image layers, including the initial raw image, and I'll set the cumulative blend mode to lighten. With all the layers still selected, I can then click on the develop persona icon, and this will redevelop all the raw images simultaneously. Rendering all the raw images at once can be quite taxing so I can uncheck Show All Layers and preview my changes on just one image. I'll boost the exposure and the brightness, and I might increase the clarity as well. Then I'll change the white balance to give the images a cooler appearance. At this point, I can enable Show All Layers to see the composited result in the Develop Persona. The clarity effect might be too strong when all the layers are blended together. So I'll set this to 10% and use return to commit that change. I'll click develop to redevelop all the raw images. And this will then take me back to the main photo persona for further layer based editing. To finish this composition off, I might quickly add a brightness and contrast adjustment at the top of the layer stack and increase the contrast. And as you've seen with the first example, I can always select and redevelop the set of raw image layers at any time if I need to go back and make any other fundamental changes to them. 
Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching.